What do you wish you would have done differently to vet this jockey? And if you would have done a better job of vetting him, do you think you still would have made the investment knowing what you know now and that you knew there was this other partner that was could step in and save the day? And, and did he save the day? I mean, did, you, did you get the returns back that you anticipated? We didn't hit the pro forma. Uh, we didn't hit our projections, but we did come out with a return. Um, and to come out whole, which I consider whole in that scenario, um, to me was a win after all the stuff that happened. Um, <clears throat> so, yeah, I, so uh, lesson number one learned. <clears throat> I did not go to the site. I did not reach out and talk to the sponsors other than the, the equity capital raiser that I, that I already knew. So I was new to investing um, and we had a conversation before all of the bad stuff started happening. And he said, uh, the capital raiser said, hey, listen, I don't really understand why all these LPs that I talk to don't go and visit the site, don't understand, really understand the, the not only the project, but the people who are running it. And so that was probably lesson number two. If you're going to put your capital into as a limited partner into a business, you are an owner, period. So if you own a car or you own a house and you're going to buy it, are you going to do due diligence on it? Or you, if you're buying a used car, are you going to take it to somewhere to have somebody look at it to really understand what's going on before you put money into the deal? Probably. I mean, there's probably some people out there that wouldn't, but, you know, on the whole, you're going to take that very seriously. And so that was that, that was instrumental in my journey <clears throat> was to understand that as an LP, I own part of that business and I will not take it lightly.